Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Sukriti, Poetry Darbar, and Indrajit for this uh, uh, occasion where we all could sit together and enjoy poetry. The topic of this poem, which I'm going to speak right now, is very close to my heart. Um, I started this poem many, many months ago and I couldn't finish it until the poetry Darbar came along and I had to finish it. Uh, we live in the state where sex ratio is 846 women per thousand men. Plenty said and written about those missing girls, even though nobody seems to care. But my poem today is not about them. It's about those who survive despite everything. What happened to those girls who refused to die? The title of the poem is Girls Who Refuse to Die. It's not about those who get flushed out surreptitiously as a scarlet bob between thighs. Neither is it about those who are scraped out of womb with rusty tools of quakes in back alley, nor those who are buried alive or abandoned on dumpsters to be eaten by wild dogs. It's not about them. It's about those who make it into this, in, who make it into the world midst middle class moral compunctions, though no less despised or resented. Guilt is not only for evildoers, it is also the gift of our collective consciousness to the girls who turn a deaf ear to laments that follow their birth and refuse to die. It finds roots in the kindest hearts and feed on affection for invidious progenitrix, unfair tutelage, sucking out the last remnants of self-love till housebroken to be good girls for the rest of their lives. A good girl is the one who can never do enough or be enough to assuage the trauma she caused by simply being born. So she carries a thousand deaths beneath her tongue and swallows one every time she has to choose between being happy and being good, yet falls short every single time. It, this poem is not about those missing girls who turned into statistics in census registers. It's about those who lead invisible lives, persona non grata, in homes they dare not call their own, stuck within the gilded frames of happy family portraits, entirely dispensable if the honor of the clan so demands, sacrificial lambs to panter the fragile, fragile male egos of those who think they own them. It is not about those voiceless victims of patrimony who were throttled before they could utter a single sound. It's about those who are treated as trophies, wrapped in silk, dripping with diamonds. They do just fine as long as they know when to smile coyly and when to retreat into shadows. God forbid if they ever acquire a mind of their own or sprout a tongue. It's about those who break through the cracks of concrete like daisies on a busy sidewalk and court whirlwinds. The girls who refuse to die. Some turn into fire spitters even if it singes their edges. Some turn into rainbow keepers, refuse to be confined within the drab walls of conventions. Some turn into ocean cuddlers, spreading their arms wide to embrace their destiny and all those who share it. Some turn into sword swallowers, gutting the barbed jibes in the pit of their stomach. 
Some turn into fragrance detectors, sniffing out the sore hearts to heal them as they heal themselves. Some turn into fake family fishes, smiling and posing for gilded frames as their innards melt. Some turn into pecan pickers, harvesting, shelling, husking, and ginning their lives to make some sense of it. Some turn into silver unicorns, chasing elusive cotton candy clouds into the twilight of their life. Some turn into everyday goddesses, balancing domesticity with dream catchers and hang on onto the silver lining. They survive, somehow, the girls who refuse to die, to maintain the semblance of normalcy, so that we continue to take pride in the heritage that persecutes them systematically. Thank you.